Now, there are basically two ways to do this. Um, each of them has many variations, but uh, one way is to just slam, slam those two chunks together really fast uh, and really hard. And that's what's called a gun type bomb. These are uh, simple, reliable. Uh, a number of countries have built them without testing. Uh, the United States built one without testing and just dropped it on uh, Hiroshima because we were so confident it was going to work. Basic idea is you have a piece of highly enriched uranium uh, and you have a piece of highly enriched uranium, you have some explosives and you fire it down the barrel. Okay, so the two come together pretty fast. Not any faster than a normal cannon, but basically as fast as a cannon shell uh, moving down a barrel. And the, the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima literally was a cannon that fired an HEU projectile into another chunk uh, of HEU. Is, that, um, that, is there a minimum size that the propellant has to be? Does it have? You know? Well, you, in order to propel a certain number of kilograms of stuff to a certain speed, you can calculate based on you know the size of your gun and so on. You know how many kilograms of explosive you need. <laughs> the amount of explosive you need for a gun type bomb is a small portion of the weight of the bomb. So, by the way, is the nuclear material. The really heavy thing in a gun-type bomb, at least if you really are using a cannon for it, uh, is the, the weight of the cannon barrel. Uh, that ends up being quite heavy. Uh, and it goes up really fast as you want your projectile to go faster and faster. Uh, so the actual nuclear material is a relatively small portion of the weight of a bomb, uh, or of the size of a bomb, by the way. Now, this is labeled tamper. Uh, that's something I probably should have mentioned there. Um, so the reflector that you have uh, can also serve as what's called a tamper. Uh, so let's think about, I have this reaction going, and, but it's heating up, it's turning to gas, it's going to expand outward. Ideally, I would like to keep it from expanding outward um, so that the reaction keeps going for a longer period of time, I get more explosive yield. Does anybody have an idea as to how I might be able to keep it can I just like put it in a really strong box? Anybody? Turns out there's no box strong enough that it will hold in the force of an, you know, a, uh, an exploding uh, nuclear bomb. But if you have things that are just heavy around the gas, right, then it, um, it takes a while for the gas to push them out as the gas as expanding. So that's what's called the tamper. The reason that that's important is if you think about it, if I've got one neutron and then two neutrons and then four neutrons and then eight, if at each generation I've got about twice as much as the previous time, that means almost all of my explosive yield is from the last couple of generations of fission, right? All the stuff up until that time is just sort of creating a lot of neutrons to cause those last couple of generations uh, of fission. So if I can just, and, it, and these are happening sort of on a microsecond time scale for each generation of fission. So if I can just hold that gas in, make, take, make it take a couple more microseconds to expand b before it stops, I'm going to get a lot more yield. So something heavy to keep the stuff from expanding too fast is what's called the tamper. And very often the tamper and the reflector are the same object. Sometimes you have a little bit of extra tamper in addition to the reflector and so on. But, so that, that's what there is here. So basically, um, these, are, these are very inefficient uh, weapons. And so you need a lot of material. Uh, you need something like the bare sphere critical mass, even if you've got lots of reflector and tamper and stuff like that, uh, to get a decent yield uh, out of that. So the Hiroshima bomb uh, had, uh, uh, for example, uh, 60 kilograms of material that was about 80% enriched. Interestingly enough, the, the first ever nuclear bomb used in war was not weapon-grade material. Uh, weapon-grade material, as we'll talk about later, is more than 90% enriched uranium. The Hiroshima bomb was only about 80% enriched uranium. You can't imagine the number of times I've seen press reports of, you know, a nuclear smuggling incident where they said, oh, don't worry, it's not weapon-grade, it's only 85%. I'm like, no, wrong answer. Um, anyway, uh, so that's a gun-type bomb. All right, so implosion-type bombs are much more efficient. 